Hello everybody, I hope you can all see and hear me well. If not, please feel free to use the chat to let us know. Welcome to the third edition of the Spatial Data Science Symposium. This time it's a little bit different from the times we have done this before. It's the um, pandemic time, of course, and we decided to do it online for one last time, but we wanted to spice this up a little bit by also doing it in a, I believe, very novel way, namely in a distributed online way. And what exactly this means, I will tell you in a second. So first of all, because you can't see us or shake our hands and talk to us directly, let me first start with the team that is organizing this year's edition of the Spatial Data Science Symposium. You see their, their faces here on the rights and their names and their creations. This is Kitty Courier, postdoc at the Center of Spatial Studies at UCSB, uh, Ray Zhu from University of Bristol, Anna Bazari from University of Glasgow, Greg McKenzie from McGill University, Shirley Stevens also postdoc at the Center of Spatial Studies at UC Santa Barbara, Johannes Scholz from TU Graz, and uh, I'm just doing the talking here, I haven't really done anything, but I'm Christoph Jenowitz from both University of Vienna and UC Santa Barbara. So, if you see those folks online, and keep in mind some of them are yet to wake up in a couple of hours from now, then um, say hello to them and you can also ask them if you have technical trouble either getting backstage or um, communicating over the channel, over the, the chat, or if you're not sure how to join the table so that you can socialize in the breaks. The main contact for this is uh, Kitty, and maybe you have already interacted with Kitty in one way or the other, so she's the, the guru of the entire air meet system. So how do we plan to, to run the symposium? Well, as I said before, it's not only an online event, it's also a distributed event. What do we mean by that? So I think online overall works great because people can join from all over the planet, we can reduce our carbon emissions from flying, we can join just specific sessions, and we don't have to make room for you know, two or three or four days in our busy schedules. But it's also a lonely experience. Some things were great online, like showing your slides, being on a panel, but the social interaction, we believed, is lacking. So we wanted to combine this with having local meetups, and there are at least, from what we know, four of these local meetups. There's us here in Team Vienna, so to speak. We are 18 people, not all of them in the room right now, but I would say we are like, 12 ish right now, and maybe somebody can move the, the hour around so that everybody can, can say hello. And our team will move over to a different room later on where we're going to enjoy um, good coffee and discussions. There's also another meetup in at McGill, but they're yet to wake up at Lisbon. And then there's another one in Glasgow. Thank you very much for organizing. There may be even more. Uh, I don't just have them on the, on the map, so to speak. So, we hope that this allows you to not only socialize, meet people, have questions, have nice discussions, hang around real human beings and not their oversized screen faces, but still everybody gets to, to um, join the conference no matter where you're from. And there's, of course, no cost associated to you folks, of course, for us, that's a different story. So in this online world, we also believe that it's sometimes too easy to join. And that makes so hard because before I sold you the idea that being online means everybody can join. Hey, Hans. Um, what I mean is that if there's no friction, if all it needs is clicking on the link, then sometimes it's easy to commit to something, but then not actually show up. And whether we run these events or many others or our colleagues across all sorts of domains, typically 60% of people actually show up. And sometimes that's a little bit of a bummer because you factor them in into the setup that you select, into the discussions you hope to have, into the speakers that you will select uh, to invite to match the audience that you perceive will be there. So I guess it needs a little bit of friction, but how do we create friction in you know, a digital world? And we believe, and we did this last time successfully already, that one way of introducing friction is to limit the number of participants that can register. First of all, we actually have to pay for them, don't forget about that, but it also gives a little bit more incentive or a little bit more commitment 
now that you registered, you hopefully you realize that somebody else couldn't, so to speak, and maybe also you are a little bit, you feel that you are the in group and not the out group, so to speak, and it makes for, for a little bit more of a, of a commitment. So we kept the registration at 300, just as last year we told everybody a hundred times that we are going to do so. I know that for some people who learned late about the event, who had maybe technical issues, or um, who otherwise could only join late, that's a problem. So we opened up the registration just as we did last time, in the last 24 hours, without advertising it for so that, you know, if you really feel you need to be here, you know you have not been excluded. Right now, we are 329, the screen says 328, just because, you know, five minutes ago we had another person join. So that's what we are at. I guess we're going to end up at something like 350. That's a very sizable group. Thank you so much. But there's one thing that you should also take into account when you try to interact with us and all the other people around, that we are not going to be those 322 at all times. Many people are asleep. Some of them, are, you know, for them it's very late. So whether you're in, in, in Australia, in Austria, or in um, Austin, so to speak, you may not be with us the entire time. And then there is yet another very important feature that is important to keep in mind. Obviously, you can talk to people on the chat, but you can also talk to people selectively by just reaching out to them. And that's something that all of us like doing, whether it's on Zoom or Airbnb. But be careful this time, because sometimes when you see a single account, like the Team Vienna account here, you're not actually talking to me, you're talking to like 12 or 30 people who see your private messages where you complain about the speaker before you going over time and on the big screen. And that's the same for team Lisbon. So if you believe you talk to Bruno, you're actually talking to quite many people, say for instance, if you believe that you are just having a private conversation with Grant McKenzie. So be a little bit careful. And also if you are the presenter and you believe it's only like 20 people listening to you, that's not the case. Most likely it's in the 40s, 50s or 60s. So a second bullet point, you made the program, and that's also something that we only have at the Spatial Data Science Symposium in contrast to, to COSIT or GI Science or Agile or Six Spatial or many other events that are absolutely fantastic events and I, that, I, that we all love dearly here, but it's typically driven from the program committee and the chairs down to the audience. Here we want to flip the experience. So almost all the sessions, aside from the people that we invite for an interview or the keynote speakers, are actually proposed by you. And either they are entirely proposed by you, so you submitted um, a proposal for a session that we then reviewed and accepted or didn't, or we reached out to people who we believe have really something unique and important to say, like Rania who's sitting next to me and, and Dara about geoethics and privacy, and we said, hey, why don't you run a session and then everything else was up to them, so inviting more people and planning the session. So we or you or us as a community, we are in control here and we would like to make this the style of the entire event, not just by the sessions being driven by the community, but also by giving you many chances to really interact so you can raise your hand and say something on the chat. You can move on to the tables later and then have a discussion that we had many of them last week, for instance, after the keynotes and continue chatting with the speakers or continue chatting about other stuff. You can also uh, ask Kitty if you have a question that you would like to be promoted to the podium and then we're actually going to see your face and you can unmute yourself and it's a really different experience. So if you like, make use of it than just, just typing something into the chat and somebody else reading out your question out loud, right? So if you aren't the shy swap, then just let Kitty know that you would like to be on the stage for your question and then maybe, you know, an interesting discussion will emerge to a great last time. And finally, of course, go to one of the local meetups if you haven't already and there you can also interact and, and be a girl and be an active member of our community here. We would like to also take those network opportunities outside of the realm of just these next two days by creating a Slack channel. There's a link down here. I know that's kind of hard to click, so we put it in the chat. And before, you can either scroll up in the chat or somebody can post it again. The Slack will be used for two different kinds of features. First, we are going to announce sessions there if there's a change in program, if there are any technical hiccups, if something happens that needs attention outside of Airmeet, 
we can all continue using this one. But if you would like to post a paper that relates greatly to a discussion that is just going on online, you would like to reach out in private to the speaker, then Slack is the absolute best platform to do so. Keep in mind, if you're doing it on Yami, great, but there may be way more people reading whatever you're saying than you may actually believe. And then finally, next SDSS is a year away. In fact, for 2023, we are going to bundle it up with a big summer school and we are going to have um, a very exciting program for here also locally in Vienna. But how do we want to bridge the, the year between where we want to really build this more into a community where we can work on papers? In fact, we already started to use Slack to work on an interesting paper last week where we can share other invites and sort of, sort of grow a broader community around this. And that's really everything I have to say. And we only have like 10 ish, 15 ish minutes. And I still owe you an overview of the program. So, obviously, the program is online. You can check it out for yourself. The program is also on your Yami link. So, you can add it to your calendars, even like Thunderbird or whatever you're using there, and be reminded of the sessions. Keep in mind, we have multiple breaks between the sessions so that we can all socialize, step out, teach, whatever I have to run, give another talk, for instance, in three hours from now, and so on. So what are the, the key highlights? And I guess everything is a highlight, but, but some notable things. We're going to have later on an on-stage interview with Rene Siva about spatial data science, ethical issues in spatial data science, GUAI, count AI, and many interesting terms that you may or may not have heard before. I think this is very exciting. There's a lot of potential for this going to going wrong because you might we are here, Rene is in, in, in McGill, we are going to do this live on stage, you can interact, you can ask some questions, Rene will answer some of mine and some of your questions. So be here and just don't look, and don't look just at the online recording later on, it's a really different experience. Then we have two fantastic keynotes, one today and one tomorrow, and they are going to be introduced later together with the speakers. Xilong Shu and Daniel Sui, as well as Vanessa Fiores Martinez. And then we're going to have all the multiple sessions that you actually propose, right? We're going to have one on conversion on spatial data science that will be more towards the data science education and distributed education and so on and so forth. Then we're going to have the geoethics spectrum session that I mentioned before. And look how, how this enables new ways of running these. One of them is sitting with us here. Rania sitting next to me, and Dara is yet to wake up hours from now, and she's on mountain time in Colorado. Right? We are going to have a leveraging knowledge, the knowledge graph for geospatial data acquisition tutorial or session where we're going to learn about the knowledge graph, knowledge graph. We are going to have one about understanding the structure of cities through the lens of data from my, if I'm not mistaken, from a team in the UK. And then we have yet another highly geographically distributed team that ranges from the, from the dark night, I believe, by now, to the early mornings. And that's, in fact, our next session after I finally stop talking, namely the forget data analytics for mobility. What we need is accessibility session. So that's going to open our event here. And then we're also going to have a geo game. It, it's called a game. But take this very seriously, your crowd is going to, to hang on it. Namely, we are going to introduce a geo game where you can guess based on geometries the location, and we are going to compete. You can compete either in your local team here if you're at a meetup, or you can, can compete on your own. We are going to introduce the game. You can then practice or play while we have you know, the game break session, so to speak. But of course, you know, being team overachievers as you all are, you can also spend your entire night to meet out and to really be uh, be the best. No peer pressure um, intended. I believe that's all I have to say. There's just one more thing going before we can hand over to the next session and to, to Rachel, who's going to, to introduce you to the session speakers, namely uh, Kitty, our Airmy wizard, would like to give you a very brief run through, through the core functionality of, um, of Airmy. So, thank you very much for joining. Have a fantastic two more days. And Kitty, take it away. Thank you. So I'd just like to mention a couple of housekeeping items about Airmeet. If you haven't found it already, on the right-hand panel of your screen, 
there's a chat function, and so that's the public chat. So feel free to post messages during sessions, uh, comments, but if you have a question during a session, we encourage you to, to post that in the Q&A panel, which is just to the right tab of the chat. And in that panel, you can upvote other people's questions that you like, uh, and that's where we'll look for questions at the end of each session. And you can also send people uh, direct messages, and you do that by finding the People tab on the right-hand side of your screen. That shows all the people who are online, and if you hover over a person, you'll have the option to message them privately. Uh, as Yama mentioned earlier, there's a raise hand button in the bottom center of your screen. So if you'd like to ask your question live on stage with your camera and microphone unmuted, push that raise hand button, and if it's appropriate to do so, we'll call you up to the stage. Uh, finally, if you entered this, this meetup early today, you were probably taken into the social lounge. That's the screen that has the banner across the top and a few tables on the bottom. And so the tables each have labels. The first one's called speaker Q&A. And during sessions where the speakers have a little bit of time after their session, they might go to that table. And if you'd like to join the table, it opens up a video chat room where you can speak directly with the speakers on video chat. So that's what I have to say. If you have any uh, problems during the sessions, please send me a direct message or an email find my email address in the chat, and have a great symposium. Well, fantastic, Kitty. Thank you so much. Again, use the link to join Slack, try out the chat. You can also go to the, to the uh, tables in just a minute and start socializing and networking while we are bringing in the, the next session to the, to the backstage area. And then once they are in the backstage area, have made everything ready for you to go, you will see the countdown again and us starting in a couple of minutes. Well, see you all in, in I guess, five more minutes. <laughs>